Okay, here we have another experiment. So on our right we have uh, South Pole exposed seeds and left we have North Pole exposed seeds. You can't actually see it, it looks like there are more here, but there are actually a lot more dead seeds on the North Pole than there are on uh, the South Pole. A bunch of them are still inside the mass, they're just not washed out. As you can see on the right, our, our South Pole exposed seeds are a lot more robust. Actually in the jar you can see it's actually three quarters of a volume larger. Our North Pole expo exposed seeds, uh, ultimate end result. This is, uh, after multiple testing, always get the same results. Our South Pole exposed seeds are puny. They actually taste different. Um, they're sickly. They're not anywhere near as green. Uh, there are a lot more dead seeds. Uh, the taste is uh, totally different. I'm uh, obviously no connoisseur, but the um, North Pole seeds taste watery. They almost taste, have a chemical-like taste to them that's uh, unpleasant. It tastes uh, watery and uh, empty. And our South Pole uh, seeds are uh, completely different in taste. Not only, the South Pole seeds uh, germinate very, very fast. Our North Pole seeds germinate very slow. They both even out kind of close after the second day. Um, actually mid-second day on all testing, but then the South, the South Pole seeds kick off very fast and they both kind of get I wouldn't say neck and neck on the mid-second day, but kind of close. But then the South Pole seeds just shoot off again in uh, speed and uh, healthiness and vigor. Exact same exposure on both. The South Pole seeds, they taste minerally in a good way. They taste rich like something genuinely pure that you would get out of the garden that was just perfectly grown. They have a slight grassy taste to them, which is what a perfect alfalfa seed is supposed to taste like. Um, so there you have it. Controlled tests over and over again. Now I'll we'll give you the information on the whys and the hows of this, and it's extremely logical. I'll have it in the third edition of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism as to why this happens, what it has to do with the uh, with the polarization of the H2O molecule, which has a special geometry of 108, 36, 36, and how that interacts with the precessional uh, magnetism, and why, although technically equal, why North Pole and South Pole are both identical in a perfect magnet, North Pole and South Pole related to charge and discharge, centrifugal and centripetal, but why the water molecule, i.e. nature, water and nature being one and the same thing, unless you've ever eaten something that wasn't based on water, which I don't believe you have, why water sees, for lack of a better word, I'll explain this in the third edition of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, why this occurs. Not only do the South Pole seeds germinate faster and ultimately grow bigger and healthier and have fewer dead seeds, they taste better, they taste healthier, they taste genuine, kind of like a pure product does, I don't want to say this tastes like a processed product. They both came from the exact same seed batches. Same test will show the same thing over and over again. A lot more dead seeds, a lot less robust. You can kind of see it here at an angle. Although, uh, I kind of fluffed up the North Pole seeds getting them out of the jar. The South Pole seeds I, I uh, had to squish back together because they were so fluffed up in the jar from their, uh, you know, their their vigor of growth that uh, I had to squish them back together so you didn't think I was uh, faking it. They were actually a lot bigger in the jar than the, than the North Pole. I will give a link to a picture as to how they looked in the jar before extraction. So these taste watery and chemical, a, a slight chemical nasty aftertaste. They're nowhere near as vigorous. You can actually see that on the greenery between the two. Huge difference between the two. So these are our North Pole exposed seeds, and there's a special way you have to do it. You can't just put it on one side of the magnet or the other. It has to be taped along the centrifugal edge of max velocity. 
not just on, well, that's the North Pole, that's the South Pole. It has to be taped along the centrifugal edge of divergent magnetism of either polarity to get the correct results. Now here's the secret. You can either do this to the seeds only, or you can do this during sprout and germination growth. So you can do it to the seeds only and get this resu these results, or you can do it to the seeds immediately upon soaking and germination. Rawls and Davis reported on this 30 years ago and they said it affects peanuts drastically. Rapid increase in oil production with the South Pole exposed peanut seeds uh, after they're uh, grown and germinated for, uh, due to South Pole magnetic uh, radiation. Remember magnetism is radiation by definition. It is the conjugate uh, co-principle to dielectricity. It is the quote-unquote dielectric field as stated by Michael Faraday, James Clerk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, and J.J. Thompson agreed to a certain degree but they were kind of playing the chicken or egg scenario, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well the answer is both, it's the chicken and the egg, not the chicken or the egg. Anyway, well, this was reported on Rawls and Davis a long time ago. Most people have never heard of these guys. It absolutely works time after time after time. Better seeds, faster growing, faster germinating. South Pole exposure, centrifugal magnetism. Crappy tasting, slow growing, slow germinating. Watery tasting, slight chemical, bitter aftertaste. Although taste is always subjective, obviously. Thanks for watching, and you'll get the explanation for why this happens, something that Rawls and Davis nor anybody else ever uncovered in the third edition of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. Because the entire universe is made out of atoms, you, me, plants, animals, etc., etc., etc. And inside every atom, forgetting about the nucleus for a second, the magnetodielectric volume of every atom is the same thing that's in every magnet. Therefore we can influence nature in every way possible and imaginable through magnetodielectric manipulation. It has nothing to do with the stuff you plug into your light socket. It does. Only that. But it, has to, it involves everything in nature. It can be affected. Biological, chemical, everything. Well, look at this. I mean, you can get these results time after time after time. Better tasting, faster germinating, faster growing through field exposure. You're manipulating the biological growth due to the H2O molecule and a specific geometry and a few other things that I won't tell you about until you get the third edition, which is free, of course, of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. Thanks for watching, and I've got some exciting stuff I would really love to tell you about, but it makes this stuff look like nonsense by comparison. Really, really exciting stuff, and an uh, associate of mine has recently got a patent on something that has to do with uh, magnetism, and uh, it is absolutely going to change the world. It will max out download speeds, currently fiber optic speeds, a single channel of uh, 20 terabytes per second. This has a potential of expanding download speeds, his uh, newly patented device to upwards of 60, 70, 80, maybe 100 terabytes per second. Can't give any more details. Can't tell you the person, but he's got a patent on it. Thanks for watching. Bye.